Welcome to Death and Aliens, an in-depth look at horror and sci-fi TV from two friends who vaguely know what they're doing. I'm Courtney. I'm Kay. How are you? Uh, I'm good. <laughs> good. Um, while Courtney and I were on a break between episodes, I was checking my email and doing some work because um, tomorrow I'm going on my first um, venue touring for booking my wedding. Oh. which is terrifying it's fine I'm so excited really? but I'm so terrified I can't wait to see pictures <laughs> so the event planner that I'm meeting with tomorrow who works for the like who works for this event group that has three different venues that I'm looking at um is a family friend and like I know her really well and I work with her and like I've worked with her before so like I'm not it's not like meeting a stranger. I'm going to like meet Tammy, but um, it's still very nerve wracking. That's so exciting though. I know. Ah. Like the first real, real thing. We did also mm-hmm. like make our guest list and it is way too long. Well, so. Uh-huh. I'm a nervous about that, but we'll figure it out. That'll work be itself fine. out. I think so too. So yeah, I'm just wedding planning and teaching and working and going to school and podcasting and somehow being five people at once every day. Living the life. Living the life. Yes. yes. How about you? How are you? Well, since it is Thriller Thursday. I have a horror story for you. Oh, God. We were talking about pain earlier, and I was going to tell you that I think I have not as good as you with pain because I went and got my nails done last week again. Okay. And I did the UV gel fill-in as instructed by you. And um, it was not the same as what they did the first go-round. The first go-round, they, like, dipped it in powder, and then they would put stuff, and they dip it in powder. This time it was like a gel they put on there and then they put you under the UV light. Yeah. And that UV light, it hurts hurts so bad. See, okay. So the first time what you got was a dip set, which is not the same. I usually do an acrylic, which is a powdered thing that they put on first, but then they put gel polish on top of it. Well, I did gel polish. So like I did... Um, so they had like the plastic nail that they put on yeah. there. Yeah. And then yeah. they put some powder that said fill on it. And then yeah. they did gel nail paint. Like then they painted with yeah. gel. That's what I do. That every was the first nails. Oh, okay. But you but you don't go under the you went under the you I always go under the UV light. Gel polish gel polish is not actually no. gel polish. No, no. This is different. So I did the gel polish okay. under the light. I always do. It's a little yeah. burny. Yeah. But before they put the polish on. They put this gel that like hardens, I guess. Yeah. On top of it. Oh, and- so they, they did a gel acrylic, not like a not the dip acrylic before they put the gel polish. Yes. Oh, interesting. And that hurt a lot. But it only hurt for like ten seconds each time they did one. Yeah. But it hurt a lot for those ten seconds. And I mean, she also like when she went to like 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 polish the nails off to like go to the next color, yeah. she like cracked a piece of it of the like plastic one on my yeah. like finger. Yeah, and that hurt a lot. Yeah, um, I'll be honest. Um, every time I get my nails, it hurts really really badly, and I um just don't think about it. Um, like the last time I got the last time I got my nails done right before I thought I was gonna get engaged. Did I tell the story on the podcast about how they were square? And then I needed them to not be square because I thought I was going to get engaged. Okay, so my technician, she redid my fill. She did my things. But the nails were very, very square at the top. And then I just go, I am so sorry, Jennifer, but I can't have my nails like that. I need them to be more coffin shaped. So she was like, okay, how do I do this in the best way possible? So then she just decided to shave them down despite the fact that they already had gel polish like locked onto them so she was like aggressive 
and she cut the skin of my fingers at the tips of my nails on like four of my fingers. I have never had more pain getting my nails done. And I literally was sitting there in pain being like, you would have been so upset if they were square when he proposed. You had to do this. You know what's coming. You can't have bad nails. You can't wait till next month to have your nails look good. Just breathe. Um, yeah, so my na- my fingertips were, like, bl- bloody for, like, two days. I had some blood. Um, and also, like, she decided, so I always do it with the pedicure because the pedicure is, like, my calming part. But she decided she wanted to do my nails while they were doing my pedicure. So I was like, I can't even enjoy I can't even enjoy the piece of the pedicure. (laughs) Because you're trying to cut my fingers off or buff my fingers off. And and at first she had me like reach across to like, because she was sitting on the side. And then she was like, oh, you don't have long arms. So finally she brought me a pillow and she stood up and I was like, yeah, this is a little bit easier. Now I'm like, and I was trying to like read my book while she was doing it. So I was like, maybe I'll just distract myself. But like after, after she broke the like portion on the plastic part, yeah, and it, like went into my nail. I was like, mm, I'm gonna have to watch everything that happens now because now I'm terrified that. But I think she was the owner, so like they look really good, yeah, and they are done really well. But it was a painful process to get there, um, and they yeah. are a little more pointy than I would have liked. I don't remember cameras. I usually like okay. a little more rounded, but see, and mine are not as pointy as I would like them to be. They're they're more yeah. round. If we traded, yeah, um, and then. <laughs> My last, my last horror element. This is actually a really great salon, and I will continue to go here. Yeah. Um, despite my my horror stories. Okay. Um, so I usually I get the same color on my nails and my toes, just because it makes me feel better about life. Yeah. Um, and so I found the one I liked, and we were like, "She's like, it's thirty nine. I was like, "Yeah, thirty nine. And we kept going, we kept going back and forth. My colors are not the same, <laughs> and I didn't realize it till like two days later. <laughs> because I went straight from my appointment to Caitlin's show yeah and so I wasn't like paying attention to anything I mean obviously my hands I saw but I wasn't really paying yeah. attention to my feet and then I was like sitting um we were having an a r meeting the next day and so I was like sitting while Brian was playing music and I just like happened to look down and I was like these are not the same color like my toes are the color of your nails which is the color I wanted want. yeah uh, maybe not that dark but like yeah that but more closer dark. yeah And these are like, yeah, yours are way redder. Yeah. Which I like, I like red and like, this is a color I would pick and I have picked in the past, but it is not the one I picked and it is not the one that matches the rest of my body. No, mine are like two shades darker than Dr. Pepper, which is, yeah. Yeah. Mine are about that shade. They blend into my hair. You can't see them. So Mm -hmm. that's. Mine are that shade with a little bit of a shine on it though. Like I got the one that was a little bit shimmery. Um, yeah. <laughs> I did not notice for like two days. Um, but yeah, so Perfect. I uh, I had a bit of a, a horror story, and now I'm like, I will be for sure waiting my full, however long I can before I go back. Because now I'm like, I feel like I'm committed now. Like I'm like yeah. maintaining it, and yeah. I get really good reactions from my nails, and so I'm like, mm-hmm. I really should keep yeah. them. But wow, this is a new this is a new level of commitment for me. <laughs> right. No, <laughs> I have to I, commit to pain. Yeah. I usually do my nails. Um my nail lady would prefer I do them every three weeks. Um four at the most. I usually wait like five or six because I'm four. Yeah, so, I uh, I think mine were ready at like three and a half weeks and I waited five. Yeah. But she did give so, me I have a little like card that they sign every time and once I get it filled up it's uh ten dollars off oh that's um, nice which is nice and she gave me two this time and I think it's because she hurt me <laughs> I didn't say that but she did Perfect. Me. she was like I'm gonna sign it twice I was like thanks <laughs> appreciate um but it is otherwise it's a really great place and it's just it's right across from my my Thai restaurant that I like love it um, Perfect. And had I not been like going straight to Caitlin's show, I would have um, gotten that for dinner. And it's just Perfect. one block over from me. Like if you remember where like the Petco is, if you remember where we had brunch, yeah, it's like on that block. And so it's oh, like I'm like a block perfect. away. Yeah, I love that. Oh, that place was so good. Yeah. 
Actually, the place that we had brunch when I was with, when my dad was with us and the place that we had brunch when it was just the two of us were both really good. Oh, I was talking about when your dad was here. I do not remember what we had when it was just the two of us. Remember they had chicken and waffles that were actually really good with the hot honey. Oh, that was across the street. That's called Murphy's now. They changed Mm. the name already. Okay. Yeah. Well, either way, both places were great brunch places. Mm -hmm. Uh, Love good brunch. My arm is also breaking out, apparently. Oh, I'm so sorry. Or I burned it on something, maybe? There you go. This one here. Yeah, I can see it. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Anyways, so clearly, I'm not doing so well today <laughs> with my mental state. Yeah. So please help me fix that situation. All right. Um, this quote says, uh, The point of living... And of being an optimist is to be foolish enough to believe that the best is yet to come. Peter Ustinov. So, like, sometimes you just gotta forget about it. Stop thinking so much and believe that we'll get better. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I like it. I love it. Well, we're here to talk about something that doesn't get better. Um, no, in fact, it, it gets worse every every time. It gets worse every time, and that is The Exorcist season two, <laughs> episode three, simply titled "Unclean." Mm-hmm. And Great. it aired. Oh, I meant to look up this date. Um, I it aired on. Oh no! Did these come out on Sundays? I don't know what day the week came out on. October thirteenth, two thousand seventeen. I was wondering if it was a Friday, but I don't. I don't know if that's quite right. Um, it was Friday the 13th. Um, uh, I don't know. It, um, it was rated 8 out of 10. Which feels right. Yeah. Um, the number one song was Bodak Yellow by Cardi B. It um, sure was. Wow. It sure was. Yeah. Um, the number one movie oh, October, was... Oh. It, October 13th was a Friday. I wondered because it's like six years back now, so it feels ah. like it should have been good. Good it, job, exercise. It was a Friday. Um, the number one movie was Happy Death Day, which was filmed on Loyola campus where I went to law school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and the number one book was Sleeping Beauties by Stephen and Owen King, which I, I have read. Um, I also. Read. Have we talked about how this is the 50th anniversary of The Exorcist already? Or have we just completely disregarded that this year? We have just completely (laughs) disregarded that. Wow. Yeah, I was like, I didn't even think about it. I was reading um, on Medium, and one of the submissions, they were like, we already have someone who's going to do a big 50th anniversary of The Exorcist. And I was like, huh. (laughs) I feel like that's something I should have mentioned before now. So it's also the 50th anniversary of The Exorcist this year. Mm-hmm. So makes yeah, sense why that was coming out. I also had the night off. I don't know what for, but I do know the only picture in my calendar from that weekend is a picture of my timesheet at Shays, where I worked every single other day of the weekend except for Friday. I did not. So I had the day off. I was doing Halloween things, I'm sure, because... While I was in law school, we had really big Halloween parties. So, yeah, no, I was uh, like two or three for the year. <laughs> I'm I was sure working, I was at a Halloween event. I was working a production of Menopause the Musical. Mm. I'm unfamiliar with that, but uh, that's okay, I guess. It, it's it's okay. Don't bother yeah. getting familiar with it. Great, good to know. Good to know. Um. So on this day. I just pulled some really random stuff. Great. Uh, Beltbury uh, Stargate archaeologists announced discovery of Allah and Ali on Viking funeral costumes in Sweden. Great. Um, so I'm waiting for that episode of Stargate. Um, the Cubs beat the Nationals to advance in the championship series. Um, so this was the year they won the the big. Mm, I do remember. Event. I do remember that because I was really 
struggling a lot with that because that was the year that the Guardians, who were at the time still the Indians, and the Cubs were in the World Series against each other. And I watched every single game and I cried. But then I was like, if anyone was going to beat the Indians, I'm glad it was the Cubs because they needed it as badly as we did. So I do actually distinctly remember that October. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And then last but not least, Bruce Arena, who was the U.S. soccer um, coach, resigned after they failed to qualify for FIFA 2018. All right. So a couple couple sports facts uh, for you. Um, Our director is Ty West, Mm -hmm. who, if you've been in the horror world, you may have heard recently because he's known for um, The House of the Devil, The Innkeepers, and the series that is, right now, everyone keeps talking about that I still haven't seen, but the movies Pearl and X. Um, They, like, the first one, I think, was, like, super indie, but there's, like, a trilogy, and people are saying it's, like, the best horror trilogy in ages. I have genuinely heard zero ever about this. Yeah. Yeah. um, I haven't seen it, but I've heard good things. Um, Fun facts. He was in, he was featured in the 2001 fall issue of Teen People. Um, And he, so he was directing on Cabin Fever 2. And there was so much reshooting done by the producers um, and whatnot that he wanted to change, like, he wanted to use the Alan Smithy name that we've talked about before. Yeah. And they said no. And so he, like, came out hard against the movie and was like, I am not claiming this movie because after all of the edits and reshoots and producing, there's no real, like, director's touch left in it. Um, wow. So okay. Fine. Yeah. Um, our writers are mostly the same. David Grimm, Alyssa Clark, and Yasmin Yelmes. Um, however, we do have a new a new writer is Manny Cotto. He is known for American Horror Story, um, the later seasons, 2018 to 22, um, 20 the the show 24, Dexter, okay. and Star Trek from 03 to 05. Um, he did, and he's also known for like the American Horror Stories that are coming. So like the new season, he had a hand in, but he did pass okay. away July 9th of this year from pancreatic cancer. You know, I knew that I had heard that name recently, and I think it was when he passed away. I, I, it had come up yeah. a bunch. Yeah, I mean, he's done a, a lot of stuff, so it could have come up anywhere, but uh, yeah, yeah, he did pass away recently. Um, So, we don't have an editor listed, but we do have a cinematographer listed. Okay. So, I grabbed him. His name is uh, Byron Shah, or Shah, and he is known for you, Black Lightning, Survivor's Remorse, and an American Crime. So, now, the moment we've all been waiting for, oh. we're going to talk about Andy Ken, who's played by John Cho. Which is and so funny Dave. because yesterday when I was watching, or yeah, yesterday when I was watching um, The Exorcist, which was actually last week's episode, um, mm-hmm. the episode was playing and I was watching it and I was just like kind of like paying attention to my notes, whatever, and then Dan just goes, John Cho? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. We're in sure is. Dan. Sure is. Welcome. Welcome to season two. Yes. Um, yes. So he is known for Star Trek. He played Sulu. Mm-hmm. Um, he is known for, of course, Harold and Kumar. Yeah. Um, a movie called The After Party that came out this year or is coming out this year that I'm unfamiliar with. Okay. And a movie called Searching that came out a couple of years back that I haven't seen yet and still want to see. I was going to say, have you seen it yet? Because I haven't seen it yet, but I, I've been meaning to watch it since literally the first trailer I saw, like, yeah. in 2018 or whatever. I watched Missing, which I think it is meant to be, like, a similar, like, style. I think it's the same people that made it. Mm-hmm. Um, because it was the one that was on the plane that I was on. But mm-hmm. I still haven't gone back and watched Searching yet. But I do, okay. I do indeed want to see that. Yeah. Um, couple of facts about him. Um, it ties in very well to the Exorcist because his father was a Christian minister. Okay. Um, and he's the lead singer of Left of Zed, which is now known as Viva La Union. 
an LA based band. I had Okay, no John Cho, I see you. Right? Right? Now I need to look up his band music. Yeah. These were the things when I was making noises about while you were getting ready, and I was like, I'm not gonna say this out loud. I'm gonna tell you in a minute. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Um so now it's time. We start in France at the River Seine. Is it Seine? Seine? Seine, yep. Seine. Seine. Yep. Um, and they keep saying, uh, we, we see someone um, handling the, um, I wrote it down, like the, the, what's the word? My God. Communion? Yeah, the communion wafers. Yeah. Um, yeah, the bread. They are handling them. And we just see hands, and then we see we're going back and forth between that scene and the the new the new bad priest group, cardinal group, um, yep. and they're saying Valkyr Povare, which I did not mm. look up what it meant, but they are releasing the demon for integration. So I assume it yeah, means yeah, which like, we t- we talked about it. We no, we talked about it um, last season when they first did it, and yeah. now I don't remember at all what it is, but it is something. Yeah. Yeah, so basically they're getting ready for integration for another member. Um, and we see that the uh, the communion wafers are being uh, sprinkled over the tarts. And then we go back to the, the Cardinal and he's talking about how fun everything is. And he, one of the guys has been integrated. So they're having this grand old time. He's talking about these yeah. tarts. He's like, I almost want to thank God for them. I was like, okay. Um, Yeah, right? The cat comes in and he's like, you know, cats climb up to look down on people because they look down on other animals, which is why they hate birds. And he's like, that's going to be us. We're going to be those people. Um, And as he's like being jovial and talking about whatnot, the the woman comes in with the tarts and distributes them. And suddenly after eating them, he uh, starts choking and then spewing blood. Yeah, because they're all demons. Yep. And shortly Gross. after, the rest follow. Um, and then she grabs the cat and lights the table on fire and walks away. And Yeah, that was, that was a moment for sure. Yeah. And she says, <sighs> all nature will be renewed by fire. And we go to the credits. Um, I'm like, yeah, for sure, for sure. For, yeah. Um, then we start with Andy. And, and he is burying our poor demon lamb again. Um, and he starts sensing, sensing something in the woods. And then we hear something also move in the hole that he's just dug. Yeah. With the dead demon lamb in it. Um, and he just buries it. And so then he goes to talk with Caleb and he tells him that Verity didn't take him to the well. And Caleb's just like, no, that's insane. Why would I lie to you? And he's right, like, well, like, I don't right. know. Why would she lie to me? Like, she says this yeah. didn't happen. I believe it didn't happen. And he's like, it could be sleepwalking. You've been stressed. And like, you know, we see it all the time with truck. And he's just like, it wasn't sleepwalking. Yeah, like, um, he's like, no, no, for sure I didn't. Yeah, and he's getting a little fussy, and then Chuck bursts in, and <laughs> at this point, Caleb's cleaning his eyes, and he's like, tell him why you clean your eyes, <laughs> and he says, oh God, that's so, so, it's, so there's no dirty looks. <laughs> I was like, these two are too much, and yeah. Andy says the same thing. He's like, you two take this show on the road. <laughs> Yeah, it was oh, that was so funny. I was oh, obsessed. I loved it. So then she he goes to apologize to Verity and she's still like super pissed, obviously. Yeah. Um, so she just like won't hear it. And then Shelby appears and just like he's just keeps creepily appearing places. Um and he says, Don't let anyone go into the woods. So Andy's like, okay fine but also like we need to talk 
because you right. need to stick to prayer and don't put blood on any more walls. He's like, I'm very open to the fact that you're very religious and I don't want to inhibit you from that, but yeah. no more blood on the walls. And I was like, that's a Can I imagine why that would be a thing you would ask mm-hmm. for. Mm-hmm. So Rose is uh, getting ready to leave for another case. She said she has to go check on another girl. Um, and she does tell him that she didn't file the report on Caleb. Um, so, of course, he's, like, super pleased. But she does tell him that state law dictates that group homes must be run by at least two people. And so it seems like it's, like, super, super recent that Nicole passed. Like, everything we're finding out feels like it may have been, like, last month she passed away. Right. Um, so that's rough um and, and he just tells her he's like you should just move in then and i was like well she does have to like work on the mainland so maybe that wouldn't work but glad everyone's getting along um so then this is what i tried to say last week and realized i was in the wrong episode yes so we switched to another scene and there's a girl in the middle of the street and when she turns around she has no face and tomas wakes up screaming um and he's in the truck with marcus obviously right and um we found out they're at their next location and his uh and the 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 diocese gave this name to marcus yeah some Um, some priest in seattle gave marcus a name right and so he they go to the door and the mom opens the door and she just looks terrified um we learn that she has a daughter, Harper, who has an imaginary friend, and she's tried all the hospitals, she's tried all the priests, and she thinks she needs, like, true exorcist um, for the situation. And so they're like, yeah, sound, sounds about right. So they go to the room, um, and Harper is just, like, panting and whimpering and making, like, terrible noises, and it's like, okay, yeah. she seems, like, pretty run down. Um. And then we go briefly to Andy and the kids are walking back to like Andy's house and kids are walking to school and poor truck. He's, they ask him where they signed the declaration of independence. Caleb does. And he just says at the bottom of the page. <laughs> and Caleb just matter of fact, was like, yeah, you're going to fail this test. And like, they just keep going. I was like, Oh, bless his heart. He might know that my tutor. favorite moments of the whole show. I love Chuck so much. I know, I know. He's such a sweet, like, innocent baby. Um, and then we go back to the Grams. So Tomas is very, like, forthcoming. And he's like, great, we're here. We're going to do this. And Marcus is like, slow your roll. He's like, we have some things we have to figure out first. Yeah, because um, I could just, it, it felt off to me from the yeah. get-go and i guess i was not incorrect but like marcus was like we have literally no proof that this is actually a demon except for that she told us it was like yeah, and like even like the mom seems a little off like this yeah. whole situation just like feels weird and like she doesn't look at i mean she doesn't look great but she doesn't look as bad as other people have seen who yeah have no um and so Marcus, of course, is like, so in the beginning, we have to figure out, like, there's some aspects to possession. So, like, um, is there any speaking in tongues, foreign languages, impossible knowledge, stuff like that. And she gives them a picture that Harper drew um, of them in this monster thing that's her imaginary friend. And as she does it and they're looking at it, a crucifix just, like, falls off the wall. Granted, there's, like, 75 on the wall. Right. So, like, not surprising but it's just a little like time well, and is this the same time where they were having the conversation with her about her faith um like like do, what a, they asked her about her own faith because obviously there's like 87 crucifixes on the wall and she's like why does yeah. that matter yeah so that happened right before she gave them the picture they were asking, oh yeah like what is your faith and she was like why does it matter and they're like well it could matter like yeah you know but also like um um if you don't 
believe in anything and you have 17 crucifixes hanging on your um, stairwell, I'm concerned That's for true. you yeah. as a person, especially because I can't remember. Is this also the scene where she talks about what's on her bookshelf or is that the next scene? Yes. That is the next thing that happened. Okay. Okay, we yeah. learned that she's been reading Chris McNeil's book. And she's like, a lot of this lines up, like everything sounds the same. And this is the point I figured it out. <laughs> I am um, like, yeah. I figured out how this was going to go. And I was like, this is not great. But um, see, I didn't quite know how it was going to go. I wasn't a hundred percent sure. I knew that the, I knew that Harper was not actually possessed. I knew something was wrong, but I wasn't sure if it was because the mom was actually possessed or if it was Munchausen's by proxy, I was not sure where we were going with that. I figured it was Munchausen by proxy because she was so sick. Like, because she wasn't yeah. all not possessed. She was not in a good state. No, she was like, very messed up looking. And so that's, I was like, it has to be because this mom is like, not. And she wasn't in a place that like, she would have integrated for any reason. Because right. like, you know, if they integrated, they could still act like normal people. Like, um... Angela did for a while. Yeah. Um, before everybody figured out she was possessed. Right. Um, but I also like I don't okay. trust anybody in the show to not just be an integrated demon because everyone That's in the show is very true. <laughs> All of them are, yeah. Um, so they go upstairs, they talk to her, and they're like introducing themselves, and she just says no needles. And they're like, We're not doctors. <laughs> You're gonna be okay. Like, we're just yeah. here to like meet you and like figure out how we can help you yeah and then marcus of course brings up the imaginary friend and he's like tell me about him and um they, we learn that it's a frog-like character named tobias and that the Which picture tobias is, the picture is not named. a demon name it is not a demon name and um she says it's hiding behind her tongue which made me think of the shiny <laughs> and um mm -hmm. so then he like shines a light in her mouth and is like, you know, she's yeah. a child, so he's, you know, doing what she needs. And he's like, mm, don't see him in there. And like, while he's doing this, they're both like saying, uh, like he says stuff in Latin and then he has Tomas talk to it in Spanish. Yeah. And there's no response. And so um after all this is happening, she just vomits all over Tomas. And I was like, I know that that sucks for Tomas, but it's kind of funny because he's also kind of being annoying. Yeah. <laughs> not, he was too, not paying attention. <laughs> not my favorite person this week. Right. And so like, it's probably good. <laughs> for him. Um, and then we go to Belgium. Um, Cause we were just hopping around the world today. Oh, and we go to Bennett, who is at another church, and a girl comes up, and we learn that it's uh, Caro's friend, and says that uh, Bennett should be healed, and why isn't he taking communion? Like, she knows he hasn't been taking communion. Yeah. Even he's been there for three days. and uh, Which means she doesn't trust that he can eat the host, because she thinks that he might be a demon. My but demon, yeah. Also, my thought while watching the scene was, oh my God, communion sounds beautiful in French. I know it was, was it Le, Le Cruz? Yeah. Um, Le Cruz. I can't. Christ or something? It was like the bread of the body of Christ. Was it Le Cruz to Christ? Is that what it is or something? Le Cruz de Christ. The could increase, yeah. The could yeah. Increase. yeah. It did. I thought the same thing. I was like, man, I wish they would call it that in the U.S. Understand? I understand that that's a different language, <laughs> but it does sound way better. Mm -hmm. um, we can say things in Latin. Why not just pick French? Like today, right. whatever. So they go through the communion line because she's like, yeah, shady of him, and so he takes the communion. Obviously, he's fine. Um, but you know, I think it was hard for him because he is so like such a uh a oh my gosh, what is the word? Devout like devout priest that he's like, I know I'm not doing right by the church. Yes. And so I'm not it's... supposed to take communion. Yeah. Um so he's doing like his religious like duty, 
but also got to make sure you're not a demon. Yeah. So I think God will forgive you for taking communion. And I think, and I think that he knows that that's what she needs before she can trust Mm -hmm. him. And so like, I think that's why he agrees, even though it feels wrong to him. Because you're not supposed to take it if you haven't confessed, right? Or like if you yeah. have something. You're not supposed to take it if you confessed. haven't confessed. If you have something that you haven't confessed, you're not supposed to take it if you are not in the mental head place of having like feeling as though you are forgiven. And you're also not supposed to take it if you've eaten within an hour of the beginning of mass. Oh, I didn't know that one. I knew the other one's interesting. Um, I just never take it because I'm not Catholic and I... Same. Very, exactly yeah. the same. So um, I didn't know the third rule because it didn't matter. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So she also, of course, takes communion and she is also fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so then they start chatting and she t- he tells her that Cara's arrested. And she says that means that he's absolutely already dead. Like, yeah, there's sure. no chance. Yeah. Um, and she starts, she, she tells him, she was like, he said, he says something about Gio. And she's like, oh, it's fine. They, uh, you don't have to worry about them. And he's like, what? And he's like, she's like, they died in an accidental fire. <laughs> it was tragic. <laughs> like, well, was so sad. So tragic. Yeah. And then he's like, but what's your name? And her name is Mouse. And, <laughs> and he was like, that's not your real name. She's like, yeah, but it doesn't matter. Right. You just need to know what to call me. And you can call me Mouse. Um. And then she says that she, like, trusts him. And she's like, okay, I'm going to introduce you to my source. Which is very exciting. It's the first, very like, exciting. source we've had. Yeah. So we go back to the Graham's house. And Tomas is still raring to go. And he's, like, going to do it anyways. And Marcus is like, we have an established proof. We can't do it if we don't follow all the steps. And yes. Lorraine gets, like like frantic yeah and she's like you're not even a priest and she's like and she looks at tomas who like just doesn't say anything yeah she's, she's like, like she's like she's like we should we, we you shouldn't be in charge the one who's actually a priest should be in charge right and so like she's uh so tomas just doesn't say anything because he doesn't want to like speak out against marcus but he also yeah. doesn't agree with marcus right um and so then lorraine like so she starts like chomping strangely the child and it's like yeah. probably a, a nervous tick but she's chomping and lorraine or like yells, a muscle spasm yeah that's yeah so uh and her belly button is bleeding and she says she was bit and i was like and that's where i questioned myself at first i was like okay wait yeah no 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 i, was, I, was, I had been so sure that the girl wasn't possessed until the mom started spontaneously bleeding and then i was like the fuck is happening here yeah, so I was like, what is going on now? Like, is this real life? Um, and then we go back to Shelby. <laughs> we leave them with her bleeding stomach. Um, and he's hearing heavy whispers in the woods still. And um, then Russ goes over to invite, or Russ and Andy are sitting out by the lake, and he invites Andy to have a beer. And Andy's like, just just a couple of sips. And he starts telling him, like, about all of his life plans he had. And- so I figured out that Russ is um, the magician's apprentice from Once Upon a Time. Oh. And, and he, he has looked that up and I forgot. He has, this, he has the same beard in Once Upon a Time. And I that's what why I was mm-hmm. so easily recognizable was because I was like, no, that, that shaggy, discolored beard. I know that face. It's Once Upon a Time. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Um, yeah, so Andy starts telling him all his plans. And he was like, I, he was planning on being a stockbroker in New York, and he was going to have all this money and do all this stuff. But Nicole, he met Nicole in college, and she completely changed his mind, and he switched gears to psychology. And he was like, and I'd be practicing today if I didn't have, you know, kids to, like, watch or whatever. Yeah. And they're just, like, chatting it up. And then Andy asks him if he's noticed any weird happenings on the island. And then Russ just is kind of like doesn't really respond and he just drops it. And then yeah. Shelby and his all his faith bless his heart, puts on his rosary at the lake and starts praying. <sighs> so we go back to the Grams. Mm-hmm. And Rose, our friend, shows up to see Harper. So we finally connected 
Yes. I literally, as soon as I saw her, I was like, ah, okay. Yeah. We connected the Kim's to the Kim's house to um, our guys. So Rose shows up to Harper and Lorraine tells her it's just a flu because she's been getting all these calls. She hasn't been in school for ages and she wasn't, she was in and out of hospitals before. And I was like, Rose is actually a really good social worker. Like, even if she like had her struggles at the Kim's house, I think that was some like personal but confliction. I think it was personal confliction and the difference between and the the personal confliction with her and Andy, and also the personal confliction with what the system says is correct and what is mm. actually correct for the kids. Like, because technically she can't let Andy keep these kids because there's not another adult living in the house and it's a group yeah. home, so it's more than one kid. She can't let Andy ha- do this. But on a personal level, as someone who cares about Andy as a person and as someone who sees that the kids are genuinely well taken care of, she is struggling with that, but also the island is creepy. And so, like, there's, like, right. multiple, like, layers of yes, but no, but yes, but no. Whereas in this case, mm-hmm. it's just a girl who is clearly not in a safe home. And this is the yeah. last chance before the authorities are called kind of thing. Right. And and that's exactly what she tells her is that, like, she's like, if you won't let me in, the next step is to go to the police. And she doesn't yeah. let her in. So she... So we go back to Marcus and Tom and Tomas, and Marcus is still super skeptical. Um, and Tomas starts just like blessing everything. He's got his water, he's got his like towels, and Marcus is like, Are you gonna do this without me? He's like, Yeah, we gotta move forward. And he tells Marcus about his vision. And this is when Marcus starts saying, like, you have to know that like now that you've like let the demon in, none of your thoughts are reliable. Yeah. And like that was also my biggest concern when he started doing this. I was like, now you can't know what's real and what's not like maybe like in the moment, if you are doing an exorcism, you are inside of the person's mind. Like then, you know, it's real. It is helpful then, but anything outside of that is going to be very hard to tell what's reality anymore. Right. And that's very stressful. Um, Tomas does not agree, but Rose sees them in the window and starts calling someone and Marcus goes to talk to him as he does. And he's like, we've got everything handled. Like we're here to help her. Like everything's fine. And she's like, yeah, well, what's different with you? Like she's been in and out of hospitals all of her life. And that's when he's like, Oh yeah. Like this isn't great. No. Um, so we go back to Andy's house and he's trying to get, um, grace out onto the porch to read her chapters yeah. so it, it's so cute like he's like all right it's time we're in chapter nine now she's like one more chapter and he's like we've already said that for the past three chapters yeah. it's like you just have to do it now so finally like, she gets outside oh yeah yeah i was gonna say and it was so cute he was like we had a deal's a deal and that's yeah and he was like we can keep pushing this off but eventually you're gonna have to be on the porch Right. So and, uh, might as well do it now while nobody else is home and we can just be outside and get it over with. Exactly. And so she does step outside and he takes off her creaky pillow hat and uh, they do well. And then he's showing her the sunflowers and everything is so nice. And like, she's getting better. And then we go back to Shelby praying in the lake and a swarm of birds just starts flying overhead and it flies straight towards the Kim's house. And obviously, Andy grabs Grace and runs her inside. And all of these birds just, like, help the house and start dying. Oh, And then they, like, even break the windows and get inside the house. It was, that was one of the most insane things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And, like, now, if I was her, I would never go back outside again. Yeah. Never. So I don't know that I'd want to be true. inside either. Like I, I, I don't know yeah. what there would be no there would be no right answer. Nothing is safe anymore. No, no, it's not. Um, and so we have a brief interlude to the Graham's house where Marcus is searching the cabinets and medications, and he finds something in a box. And we go back to Andy, and so Andy's still trying to comfort Grace, who just like doesn't want to go outside anymore. She's like, never. never. And I just want to stay with you. Yeah. And uh yeah. And then we hear the doorbell ring and so he's like, "Here, you know, have your animal and stay here with him and then I'm going to I'll be right back." And so we go to the door and it's Russ. And he's like, "This moment Russ says, goes, remember how you asked if I saw anything weird on the island?" Yeah, he was like, "Is this one of those things?" And Andy's like, "Yep, this would qualify. This <laughs> this would be one of them." Um 
And Russ says that they came from the lake from where Nicole was. And so we learn that she took her life at the lake. Um, and so, of course, he's like, he asked Russ to just stay there because Grace is upstairs. And he takes off to the lake, and that's where he sees Shelby in the water and tells him he has to get out of the lake immediately. And he's like, and Shelby keeps saying, this is where it killed Nicole. And Andy yeah. immediately gets upset. And he's like, I can buy into so many things. He was like, but this is not one of them. She took her own life. You cannot say it's something else. And he just was like overly upset. Like, I get but it. I, I, I totally get it. Andy's reaction and I think that in like if I were in his position I would probably react the same mm-hmm. way but I don't think Shelby's wrong I don't think Nicole killed her I, yeah I also don't think Shelby is wrong especially especially after this scene mm-hmm. with the birds and all I was like um it, it yeah. does and it feels like whatever had a hold of Caleb is whatever had a hold of her yeah and whatever Grace is seeing like Grace is obviously seeing something everyone else isn't yeah um, no i for sure so, i for sure think that nicole did not kill herself yeah so i agree so we go back to the graham's house and marcus just starts yelling at lorraine and he like slams her back and he just goes oh my gosh it's so sweet it broke my heart he goes up to harper and he's just like you he were holding so her face you and he was like you are clean you are pure you are wonderful you there is nothing wrong with you and i wanted just I'm gonna cry now. Like, it, was, it was so sweet, and I was like, "Stop!" Oh gosh, Ugh, I'm gonna cry now. But he, uh, and then she just kind of like goes. Lorraine goes off, and Tomas just follows her. And while he's following her, he finds the box of medications that Marcus because had. because before Lorraine disappears and Tomas follows her, Marcus tells them everything that he figures out. He's like, yeah. you've been drugging her. You want her to be crazy. You're, you're not using the book as a comfort. You're using it as a guide. You're doing yeah. this to her. Which is insane. Um, yeah. So he starts, so he goes downstairs, he finds the box and then Lorraine like freaking takes a hammer to the back of his him. head comes out with a hammer and I was like oh my god like what is happening I felt like we were the slasher um and then we go back up to sweet Marcus who was just trying so hard to like comfort Harper and tell her everything's gonna be okay he's yeah. like I've got you now you're gonna be okay don't worry and she doesn't believe it she's like I'm in pain he's like I know and you're gonna be in pain for a minute but like we're gonna get through this and uh Lorraine comes upstairs with the hammer and just starts coming after Marcus and he oh, he tells Harper to close her eyes and not to open them no matter what she hears. And he ends up like in a, a struggle fight with a uh, Lorraine who then he throws into the mirror and she gets the uh, glass mirror and cuts him. And it's a whole situation. And then Tamaz shows up bloody. His whole face is bloody now. And yeah. Well, because he did just Rose get shows- hit in the back of the head yeah. with a hammer. I thought for sure he was knocked out at least for the rest of this. Like me too. Time. <laughs> I'm so sure I did not show I was genuinely surprised he wasn't like hospitalized or dead. Like yeah. I didn't think for the sake of the show, I didn't actually think he'd be dead, but I was like, you don't sure. you don't just like wake up after a hammer to the back of the head because there was so right. much blood on the hammer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I mean head wounds do bleed the most, but yeah. still. still. <laughs> um yeah, and then Rose shows up with the police. So kudos. Um, and then we jump over and we wake up and we're at the hospital and Marcus is talking about this being like a new evil. He's like, I, I think I've seen it all. I've seen every demon. I know what they're expecting. I know what they think of me. He's like, but the way that this mother treats her child is a whole different type of evil that I just like couldn't even imagine. Yeah. And well, and I think um, especially, I think it's especially hard for Marcus because his parents were not good people. He did not have yeah. that. Right. And so they're having this like whole situation and he's talking with him. And then uh, Tomas just goes, I was wrong. Marcus says, which bit? Like, yeah, all of it, all of it, friend. Um, And then finally, finally, Tomas realizes that he's not ready. Like that he still needs Marcus. They have to follow this very strict like set of because because like like i said last week i do think that tomas is a special ability cutting in and out oh nope hold on 
sorry, my Siri cut in as you started talking, and then oh. I don't know what you said. Oh, I was say I, so I was saying last week. I do think that this ability that Tomas has is potentially a good one mm-hmm. if used correctly. But he's right; he's not ready. Yeah, and he doesn't know how to use it. He doesn't know like the links that it goes one way or another. Like you have right. to know that. Um, and then Rose comes out to talk to them, and he, she's like, "She'll be okay physically." And she'll go into the system now for a minute um, until we find her permanent home. And they're like talking back and forth. And she goes, you know, I think I know the perfect place for her to go. And I was like, and this is how we get to the Kim's house. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we have a brief moment with Andy, who's watching old videos of Nicole on his phone. It's so sweet. And then we go back to Mouse and Father Bennett. And he's like, I thought we were going to see the source. And she's like, oh, we are. And he's like, okay. And she's like, do you remember Dolores Navarro, who was the exorcist who's been missing for months? And he's like, yeah, I just thought she was dead. And he was like, she said, yeah, they're not killing them. They're not killing exorcists. And she takes them in and it turns out that she has been possessed. Um, Which now makes me think that maybe Cardinal Caro is is going to be a bit as not dead. Yeah. But I do think so, that Cardinal Caro, I hope, like I'm sure I'm I'm sure he's not as strong as I want him to be, but I my my heart is like he's the only person who's actually helping Bennett from the Vatican. So maybe he'll be strong enough to resist um yeah, integration maybe. and they'll have to kill him because he won't accept the demon. Yeah. That would be that would be my my dream way for that to turn out. That would be ideal. I I hope he's dead, which is not a friendly thing to say. Right. But In very few cases, is hoping someone's dead the better the option answer. for them. Right. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that is where we end our episode, folks. So uh, I don't have any trivia for you because you know how they don't like to put trivia mm-hmm. on the Exorcist IMDb. Um, so who do you want to punch in the face? Uh, Lorraine? Yes, yes, of course. Of course. Um, I I didn't prepare, I forgot to prepare like a, ahead of time for who I would punch instead. Um, all the doctors that got that. She got to let Lorraine too. give her get Heather <laughs> yeah. or her Borella's medication. Yeah, for sure. And the priests who didn't recognize that this wasn't a possession, yeah. but went to House of Hypoxy. Maybe those those all of those people as a collective. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm down yeah. with that. Um, so who's your MVP? Shelby. I just uh, bless his heart. Bless his heart. He's not going to give up so with the faith, and he's he's going to be. I feel like he's still going to be the only one who doesn't have something awful happen to them because he refuses to believe that it's anything like in yeah. anything but God saving him, and it is just really tragic. Yeah, Ugh. he's almost like the Henry of our season with his like reading the Bible and like mm-hmm. beliefs and everything and not yeah. giving up. Yeah, um, yeah. And because you picked Shelby, I'm going to pick Marcus. Well, because Marcus is, if if it weren't for the scene at the lake, I probably would have picked Marcus because everything he did with Harper and like, that was all beautiful. But that scene at the lake with Shelby being like, I don't think Nicole killed herself. I don't think you missed something. I don't think you can blame yourself anymore. I think this is bigger than us. Like, cause that's really what he was saying. Like, obviously he was saying that we had, they had to be prepared. They had to keep be vigilant. He was praying, but he was also letting, trying to get Andy to forgive himself. Yep. Yep. Which was lovely. I agree. Um, yeah. So do you have any predictions for next week? I'm afraid. Well, obviously my predictions are that Marcus and Tomas are going to go to the island with Harper and then we're going to see um, some weird, weird shit go down. Yeah. But uh, that's that's really all I've got for now. I don't know what the weird shit that's going to go down is. But. So one of my concerns, and this is what I mentioned last week that I was like, I don't know if it's Caleb that's possessed, 
um, I'm concerned that a demon is working through grace. Um, because while I know you said in the beginning, you were like, it'd be too obvious for her to be possessed. And so I don't know that she's possessed per se, but she's seeing all of these things. And sometimes they like use small children for things like that. Yeah. So I wonder if she's being used, if she was the voice that Caleb heard to go outside and it wasn't Verity and, you know, she's scared to go outside and she keeps just being at the wrong place, at the wrong time to hear all of these like conflicts that are happening in the house and she's scared of everything like maybe so i don't know i do think her fear i think that her fear and the fact that she's never outside is why i don't think it's her because i feel like if it is in the woods it can't yeah i don't know well and like maybe she knows it's in the woods and that's what she's scared of outside like maybe so I'm not, I'm not saying that she doesn't she doesn't know it's there or that she doesn't have some connection yeah. with it i just don't think she's possessed i don't think it, it's working in her see i don't i don't think she's possessed either i think it's just like a i don't know i don't know yeah. how i think it's happening um i i think you're right that shelby won't be possessed because of his faith but i do worry because he is the one that's both faithful like what if that's meant to be like a throw off like he's oh. the one who actually ends up possessed because He's been so straight laced in his uh, faith. I don't like that. I, don't I know want I don't like to happen it to him. But I also I don't want anything to happen to him. But I also, if anything happens to Truck, I'm gonna lose my mind. Of course, well, I don't think baby. it would happen to Truck because I don't think his like mind is fully developed. Um, and so I don't think that they're gonna use someone who's a little more like weak or like doesn't have the mental state. Like they want someone well, to have but, a strong enough mental state. Too. Yes, yes, but. I think mm-hmm. that's true, but I think that if it is as big of a force, I mean, look at how many birds were on that island. Clearly, there's something yeah. hugely wrong on this island, and I think that it might not start with someone like Chuck, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to use someone as weak and manipulative, mm-hmm. manipulatable as Chuck to get to the goal. Yeah, that's possible, too. That's possible, too. Um Yeah, I also think that maybe Barkus and Tomas are going to find out something's happening there and they're going to stay at the home so it won't just be a single person home while they're figuring out what's happening. So the group home can stay open until they figure out where to go. And I think in the end, Rose will move in. I think Rose and Angie will have a situationship and she'll move in by the end of the season. But I don't think it's like tomorrow. Yeah. Um, But I think that's their solution to keeping the group home. All right. So those are all my predictions um, and my thoughts. And um, I'm very excited about the season and to see where it goes. Um, yeah. I'm ready to see more of Mouse. I want to get to know her better. I know. So, um, Yeah, so if you have any thoughts or predictions or interesting facts yeah. about Exorcist um, or are celebrating the 50th anniversary, yeah. email us, deathandaliens at gmail.com. Find us on all the social media at Death and Aliens. You can find me at cecloud13 everywhere at e-m-k-a-y underscore superstar and we'll see you for sci-fi sunday bye bye